We come together as a community united in our faith and desire to grow closer to God. May our time together be a source of inspiration and renewal for us all. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is out front leading the way into this new year as we enter into February. And you know, God is good because it is starting off already on the right path. That groundhog did not see his shadow. <laughs> Not that I depend on such things. We know that God is the one who determines when the weather begins and when it ends. But hey, you got to have a little fun out here, okay? Don't take yourself so serious and don't take life too serious, all right? You miss the fun parts. So let's get started. Turn, into the, turn to the book of Matthew in chapter 11, verse 28. That's our scripture reading this morning, which reads, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. This verse serves as a reminder that no matter what struggles or hardships you might be facing, I might be facing, we can always find rest and peace in Jesus Christ. He invites us to come to him with our burdens and he will provide us with the strength and comfort we need. And right now, if you need that strength and comfort, we wanna pray for you. We wanna reach out to you through the TV or through the podcast, however you're checking us out this morning, uh, throughout the week. We want you to know that we are praying for you always. And I pray that you pray for me always because we should be praying for one another. Iron sharpens iron, right? Amen. So let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we come before you today with heavy hearts, seeking your healing touch. We know that you are the great physician, and we trust in your power to bring restoration and wholeness to our lives. We lift up those who are in need of physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. May your loving grace flow through them, bringing comfort and strength. We also pray for those who are caring for the sick and the suffering. Give them wisdom and patience to provide the best care possible. Lord, we know those days come long and sometimes they're hard. And sometimes we might be hurting ourselves as we are helping people. We might be in pain ourselves, but someone's got to do it. So we ask you, Lord, to consider us. Grant us the, the constant love in your presence. And we will always surrender ourselves to your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Our topic today is from guilt to grace, the transformation through confession. From guilt to grace, the transformation through confession. And I wanna talk to a specific group right now, along with my believers out there. I wanna deal with my folks whether you're a believer or not, you might have a problem with repenting. You might have a problem with confessing your sins because for whatever reason, you feel like you're right all the time. For whatever the case is, you feel like that you know that you're right and everybody else is wrong, regardless of what people have told you over and over and over again, regardless of what has been going on. You have refused to repent and change your ways, change your words. Whatever the case is, you have refused to do it. And you've lost some friends along the way. You've lost some family members along, along the way because you just don't see it. You just don't get it. So I, I, this, is gonna, this message is gonna focus more on the unrepentant community out there those who really don't want to change because what you feel in your heart is right and what you're doing you feel is correct and even though everybody around you that you have affected have told you that you're hurting them, that you're affecting them, you don't see a reason to change. So this goes for you. And also for those who are doing the forgiving Yes, we're all, we all fall on that side of the line sooner or later where you're the one doing the forgiving. 
keep forgiving because God has called us to forgive. But when it comes to those earthly consequences, put some healthy boundaries up until that person gets it because you can forgive and you can forgive and you can forgive and that person will never change because in their minds they think they know enough about the bible to throw it in your face that well, the bible calls you forgive so you got to forgive me regardless of what i do regardless of what you do now that's the life that you live around your friends around your family Regardless of what you do, do you not care about what you do, unrepentant person? Do you not care about what you do? It's time to care. Because time doesn't care and time will do its job. And you will look up and everybody will be gone, moved on, grown up, families on top of families, generations coming into play. And you'll be watching from a distance because you have not repented, you have not confessed your sins, and you've been boundaried off because you just can't do it. From guilt to grace, the transformation through confession, because there is a transformation through confession. And our focus today comes from 1 John 1, 9, which reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you right now to be with us as we address the problem of not repenting for our sins. Lord, we know there are people out there right now that are dealing with that. They might be believers, they might not, we don't know. But what we do know is that we need to confess when things have gone wrong and we are the cause of it. We need to confess to you, confess to them, ask for forgiveness, be forgiven, and change. That seems to be so hard in a world that cries for individuality and acceptance even when it's wrong, even when it's detrimental to other people's mental health, to their walk with you. We ask you to make them care. We ask you to reveal to them their errors and help us forgive them and help them in building this pathway through restoration. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, amen. Repentance is a crucial aspect of the Christian faith, yet it's often misunderstood and overlooked. Many people associate repentance with feelings of guilt or shame, but in reality, it's a beautiful and necessary step in our journey towards salvation. In, in this message here, we're going to explore the meaning of repentance as well as the importance of this discipline under God as we continue our walk through this thing called life. Now, what does the Bible say about forgiveness for the believer? Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others for their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Here's the thing. It's essential for you to understand the context in which this was written. Because we know... We just read that Jesus calls for us to forgive. But then there's the other side of this, the one that's receiving the forgiving. And that's who we're talking to today. We're talking to you out there, listener, or, the, or if you're watching on TV on Roku, I want to know, are you gonna change today? Because God has called for you to change today. God is calling for you to repent of your sins and be forgiven and be saved. The Apostle John wrote this letter to a community of believers who were facing false teachings and struggles with sin. He wanted to encourage them to stay true to the teachings of Jesus and to remind them of the importance of confessing their sins and seeking forgiveness from God. This verse comes in the midst of a message from John about the light and darkness, emphasizing the contrast between walking in the light, in righteousness, in other words, and walking in darkness, in sin. So what do we get from this? What do, what, what do we get from this when we think about the pathway from guilt to grace and this transformation through confession? The first thing we understand is the call to confess. 
There is a call to confess our sins. The word confess means to acknowledge or admit to something. In this case, it refers to acknowledging our sins before God. Confession is not just admitting our wrongdoings, but it also involves taking responsibility for them. I want to say that one more time out there because that's the part that for the unrepentant sinner that's listening right now, for the doubter that's listening right now, for the one that's angry at God right now, for everything that's going wrong in your life, here is the part that you're missing. Confession is not just admitting our wrongdoings, but it's also taking responsibility for them. To hold yourself accountable for what you're doing wrong, for what you're saying wrong, for what you have said wrong, for what you have done wrong. Because that's your problem. You want people to keep forgiving you time and time and time again, and you don't make no changes. When you know now, because they've forgiven you, they've always obviously acknowledged that you are saying something wrong, that you're doing something wrong, that your behavior is not in step with what's going on around them as a family. Maybe you are someone married who is doing something that is causing a problem and you've yet to repent and confess and you just haven't gone through this. And the distance between you and the people that you love gets further and further and further away. But you know what your problem is? You put the responsibility of restoration on them. They've done their part. They have forgiven you. Okay, what about this pathway to restoration? What are you going to do to get this right? First of all, you need to confess your sins to God. You need to confess that you are doing or you have done some things incorrect. And then you need to go ask for forgiveness from that person or from those people that you have offended. Go ask forgiveness. And then when they forgive you, okay? When they forgive you, how about you tell them what you're going to do to get this right now? Maybe you might, you might feel that everything in your heart, you're not wrong. Maybe you feel that. But if it's separating you from God, it's sin. If whatever you're doing is separating you from the Lord, it is sin. And if people have told you that what you're doing is not right, it is not biblical, it is ungodly, and you are affecting them, and you've done some things wrong, and you've said some things wrong that's caused a uh, divide in whatever circumstance you're in, and you're not asking for forgiveness from God, let alone from your friends and family, what, what do you expect to happen? Just let you just keep being you? I'm gonna tell you right now, if someone comes into my house sick, we're gonna find out how to get you healed. We love you, we care about you, but we're gonna find out how what medicine you need to get healed to stop that sneezing, to stop that coughing, because you are affecting everybody in the house. You're affecting everybody. Everybody's looking like, okay, what does he have? Because I don't know if I want it. That's what sin looks like. It's a sickness. And we're going to, of course, just by the divine intervention of the Holy Spirit inside of us, we are going to reach out and say, okay, what can we do to help you? Because you are affecting the house. So goes the body of believers. When you are an unrepentant sinner, and you come before the body of believers, expect someone to reach out and say, how can we help you get right? And then when you don't, what do you expect to happen? I mean, really, what do you, we're not gonna love you to hell. Now, that, that's not what we're not gonna do. We are not gonna love you to hell, okay? And we're not gonna sit there and let you keep causing destruction and chaos either. Some healthy boundaries are gonna get risen due to your earthly circumstance, due to your earthly consequence. That's what's gonna happen. Because you're not gonna wreck mental health, you are not gonna wreck people's emotional health. People now all of a sudden and got anxiety because you coming around and they know something's about to happen. You're gonna say something crazy, you're gonna do something crazy. No, 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 no. Because you have assumed God has raised fools. No, 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 he is not. He gave us good minds for thinking good minds for common sense. It's called discernment. That's what it's called. There's a call to confess. 
and it requires humility and honesty. God calls us to confess our sins, not to condemn us, but to bring us closer to him. Only when we can admit our sins can we receive forgiveness and be cleansed from unrighteousness. But not only that, God is faithful and just. There is God's faithfulness and justice. We can, when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. This is a beautiful promise that we can hold on to. God is faithful to his word and his promise, and he has promised to forgive us when we confess our sins. He's also just, which means he is fair and righteous. He does not show favoritism or overlook sin. We can trust in God's faithfulness and justice, knowing that he will always keep his word. And he will see you through it. Many of you all have this thought process that once you have received forgiveness, that we're not going to address the problem you created. We got to fix that problem. Have we forgotten about it? Is it under the rug? Okay, we're done with it now, but we still have to address the damage. We got to fix that. It's not just something you sweep under a rug and you do it again. No. There Again, there's got to be a pathway of restoration to ensure that this does not happen again. It's like if you gave your keys to your kid, he's going out with his fellas and he wrecks his car. Okay, you make sure he's okay because life comes first. You can always get another vehicle. That, that's beyond the point. Make sure the kid's okay. Make sure the family's doing okay. Make sure you can, he, if he needs to go to the doctor, you do all the due diligence of a good parent. Then months later, he's done. Everything, he's healed. Everything's straight. You've talked to him about driver safety. You, you, you feel like you've gotten through and he gets in that car does the same thing again. How many times do you give him the keys to the car before you have to sit him or her down and say, okay, we need some rules here. We need some guidelines you need to follow to ensure you don't make the same mistakes again and again and again. Maybe you shouldn't have that many people in the car. Maybe they're distracting you. Maybe you shouldn't be messing with your phone or your, uh, your radio, whatever the case is. You need some disciplines to ensure proper discernment in what has been given to you. You need some disciplines. And don't, and don't sit here and tell me that you disagree with some rules being put down. You enjoy rules all day long. If they gave the Dallas Cowboys an extra down during the playoff game for no apparent reason, you'd be going off. If they allowed a person to crack one out to the uh, center part of the baseball field in the foul zone and called a home run, you'd be going off. If the basketball player ran out of bounds with the ball and came back in and shot a three-pointer and won the game, you'd be going off. Why? Because those are not the rules. So you agree with rules. You enjoy the rules because the rules ensure enjoyment. The rules ensure stability and order and peace. Don't sit there and say you can't set rules when everybody around you sets rules. Then there is forgiveness and cleansing. The third thing we get from this is when we confess our sins, God not only forgives us, but also purifies us from all unrighteousness. You get cleansed. He burns it away. It's wiped away clean. The blood of Christ wipes away that sin clean. This is the beauty of repentance. Now we can get over that hump. Now we can get past what you've been holding on to all these years. Now we can get past it. And you can actually be healed and experience the healing. You, When you repent, and you confess that you've done something wrong and you apologize and then people can figure, okay, what can we do to make this better for everybody? You just feel better, like a weight has been pulled off your shoulders. I don't know why anybody would want to hold on to something that is hurting them. I have no idea why. Because this, this is the beauty of repentance. When we come before God with a contrite heart, he not only forgives us, but he also cleanses us from the effects of sin. 
We are no longer held captive by guilt and shame. And many of you all right now are sitting out there being held captive by the guilt and shame of what you've done or what you're doing. And Satan is whispering in your ear, they're not going to forgive you. If you actually told them what actually happened, they're not going to forgive you. They're going to be mad at you. You, you might be thinking to yourself that it's demeaning to confess that you're wrong. That it, it shows a sign of weakness. No. It makes you sick. That's what happens. Some folks believe that anger keeps them strong. That ang the anger of what was done to them will keep them strong. No. No, it's not. Some folks believe that you can, I can do what I want to do and say what I want to say, regardless of what people think of me, regardless of what my family thinks of me. This is me. This is what I do. This is how I say it. And if you don't like it, stay away. What kind of life is that? Regardless of how tough you want to be, what kind of life is that though? Now among Satan's people, yeah, they're going to encourage you. They're going to enable you. Because they know you're not living a God-like life. They understand that, and they want to keep you right where you are. And guess what? You're never going to grow. It, 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 I'm sorry, it does not happen. You will never grow as a believer. You will never grow as a person. Because you're hanging with people who have decided they're not growing anyway. So you all would exist in the same spot for years to come. While those who have repented, accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, who have received the Holy Spirit, you will see them growing in their faith. You will see them once upon a time, they might have been lonely, no spouse, no kids, no family, on drugs, on alcohol. Now, all of a sudden, now, they're on Facebook with the family photo. The kids are going to school. He or she is celebrating their fifth wedding anniversary. And here you are in the same place. You see them going to church. The kids are getting baptized. They've gotten baptized. They're involved in kingdom work. And you'll be still same place. You'll still be there. And they'll visit you and you'll still be in the same place. Trying to justify your reasoning. To live in your sin and to be the person that you are. And they'll pray for you and they will talk to you and you'll reject them until eventually they've got to move on. God is moving them. God, God is working on them. God has got them doing things. You've made your choice. He's turned you over to it. Good luck. The time is now. The time is now to confess that you're a sinner that needs saving. The time is now. You need to get up, shake it off, and you need to look up to the sky and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right now. I have messed this all the way up. And I need you, I need your saving grace right now. Help me find the pathway to restoration, to, to do better with the forgiveness that I have received from my friends and from you. Help me to handle that better. Some of y'all need to do that right now. We are no longer held captive by the guilt and shame. But we are set free and made pure through the blood of Jesus Christ. This is a testament to God's grace and love for us that he would not only forgive, but also cleanse us from our sins. And then understanding this, and this is another portion that a lot of folks just don't get. Repentance it's an ongoing process because <laughs> you're going to you're going to make a mistake sooner or later. You're going to say something wrong. You're going to do something wrong. You're going to think something wrong about someone or something. It's not a one time event, but an ongoing process. The word confess in this verse is in the present tense, indicating that this is something that we should continually do. And as Christians, we are called to walk in the light and to continually examine our hearts and confess our sins to God. Repentance is not just about seeking forgiveness for past sins, no, but it is also involving turning away from sin and living a life that is pleasing to God. It is a daily surrendering of our will to God's will and a constant reminder of our need for his grace and mercy. Let's wrap this up. Here's where we're going.
Repentance is not something to be feared or avoided, but is a necessary step in our journey towards salvation. As we confess our sins and seek forgiveness from God, we are reminded of his faithfulness, justice, and love for us. Let us continually examine our hearts, confess our sins, and walk in the light knowing that God is faithful to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May we never take the gift of repentance for granted, but continually strive to live a life that is pleasing to God, because this is a gift. The gift to repent and be forgiven instantaneously is one that only God does through acceptance and entering a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not enough to believe in God. You must accept Christ as Lord and Savior over your life. You must surrender and submit. And right now, if you're out there and you need to do just that, and you don't know where to start, and you don't know who to talk to, here's what I want you to do. I want you to contact us via the information given early in the show and go to www.get-prayer.com. Contact us right there, and we will love to pray with you and go through the pathway to becoming and understanding what a relationship with Jesus Christ is like. We want you to trust God. We want you to trust the word that's been given, and most importantly, trust the process of forgiveness and restoration in God's kingdom, because it's there for you, it's waiting for you. You've just got to stop believing your own hype Turn to the Lord, repent of your sins, confess that you know you're wrong, and you need a Savior because you need saving. And watch what God does in your life. Watch what he does with your relationships. Watch what he does in your response to your family. And look at the peace you'll receive that goes beyond understanding. It might be peace you've never experienced, but I'm here to tell you that yes, it does, ex it does exist. And you can be a part of it right now contact us. We'd love to hear from you. So until next week, may God bless you, may heaven smile upon you, and God willing, we'll talk to you then. You take care.